Hi everyone, welcome back to Kristen's Epic Adventures. Today we're going to be covering the differences between the D&D Starter Set and the D&D Essentials Kit. Make sure you subscribe, hit the notification bell, and if you liked this video, give us a thumbs up. One of the quickest and easiest ways to get right into playing Dungeons and Dragons is to pick up one of their starter sets. Now the first one that we're going to go over is the basic Dungeons and Dragons starter set. You can find this a lot of places, your local game store, Amazon, um, Target might have them, I'm not sure. Uh, I'll put some links in the description down below of where you can find this item. Um, but again, it always is good to support your local game store if they have that there. Um, so this says that it's everything you need to start playing the world's greatest role-playing game. So let's open up the box and see what's inside. Okay, um, both of these starter sets say that they are for ages 12 and up. Honestly, I believe you could probably play with a child a little bit younger if you help them out a little bit. So inside this box in the starter set, we've got a set of dice that you need to play. Pretty cool. So there are six dice here in this set. They're blue and these are the um, basic dice that you'll need to run the adventure in the box. Okay. The other thing that's in here is an adventure for you to play. The Lost Mind of Fandelver is how I say it. I've heard some people say Fandel... Fan I don't know. I don't know. I say, I say Fandelver. <laughs> Um, it is a four-part adventure, and it has uh, instructions in here for whoever is going to be the dungeon master. It also comes with a starter set rule book. Now, this is a lot more condensed than what's in the hardcover of the player's handbook. Okay, these are basically your basic rules to get you playing. This starter set is basically an open up start playing right out of the box type of uh, product. So basically this rule book has um, how to play, basics of combat, the basics of adventuring and spell casting. You're also going to find in here six pre-made characters. I think it's six, let me look, it might be five actually. Um, so we have a, they're all level one. We have a human fighter, a high elf wizard, a halfling rogue, a dwarf cleric, and another human fighter. And the difference between the two human fighters, it looks like, is one of them is wearing chain mail and uses a great axe and uses the defensive fighting style. And the other one uses archery as his fighting style and he has leather armor and a longbow. So one's almost more like an archer and the other one's more like a, a fighter with a big giant great axe. So that's one, two, three, four, five. Five pre-generated characters. So this set does not have any blank character sheets. All it has in it is pre-generated characters, okay? It's got all their stats already on there, all the different abilities they have. Um, all that's left blank for you to fill in is their name. You can give them a name and you can put your character name on the sheet and keep track of their experience. Now there's also instructions on the back for leveling your character up to fifth level. So all the characters in this box start at level one and as you go throughout the adventure, they can level up to level five, okay? So this is, like I said, very much a open up the box, grab a character that's already pre-made, choose someone to be the DM and jump right in. Um, like I said, the, the Lost Mine of Fandelver is in four different parts. There's descriptions of the magic items and the monsters in here and things like that. Rough estimates I've read online, it depends on how long you get together and play at a time, but um, I've read that this adventure would take maybe around like 35, 40 hours total to complete. So that's why they do give you the information on leveling your character up to the next level. They will reach a point where they have enough experience to become a little better and a little better. Um, but again, this is great 
for just open up the box, pick a character, someone's a DM, you've got your basic dice, let's just jump right in and play, okay? Um, a basic rules only. This is great if you've never played before and you wanna try it out. This also retails for $19.99. I believe it's a little bit cheaper uh, on Amazon. Um, but yeah, five pre-generated characters can bring your character up to level five and a pre-made adventure. So those are, your, are the basics of your starter set, okay? Now the other box that's also available is your essentials kit. And we'll go over what's in this box as well. Um, let's open this up. So in the essentials kit, you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven dice. So what this does is you, you only need those six basic dice to play, but what this does is it gives you three copies of your D6, okay, and two copies of your 20-sided die, and I will explain why they did that. These ones are also red instead of blue like the starter set. It also comes with a pre-made adventure called Dragon of Ice Spire Peak. Very cool. Um, not sure how long this one takes to play from start to finish. You get a essentials rule book. Now, this box does not come with pre-generated characters. This box has blank character sheets. They're way down here at the bottom. <laughs> okay. You've got uh, six blank character sheets. The front of the box says this is for two to six players. Um, so six blank character sheets and the basic rules have the essentials of creating a character. So in this set, you're actually going to get the ability to make your own character. Now it does go with the four basic races of dwarf, elf, haveling, and human. Again, the player's handbook, because that's all your essential rules, has some more races than that. But this one is, it wants you to get into character creation, but not make it too complicated. So it only starts with these four basic races. And then for classes, you have bard, cleric, fighter, rogue, and wizard. Um, and again, only a few of those are actually even use spells and spell casting. They also have provided you with five different backgrounds to choose from. So this set gives you a little more flexibility. Again, the other set is characters are already made, no information about making your own. Let's just jump in and play. This one has a little bit more um, information. It's kind of a very slimmed down version of the player's handbook. Then you've got directions on how to play the game, your different types of equipment like armor and weapons. Um, and then a, a spell list as well, okay? So that's your essential rules. These are the six basic, six blank character sheets. Now also in this book, in this box, we have some initiative cards. Um, you may remember from one of our other videos, initiative is the turn order in combat and it's determined by your dexterity modifier. So it's determined by how like quick and reactive your character is, how, what their turn order ends up in battle. So just to help people track that so they know if their turn's coming up next or coming up soon, they've given you these uh, one through nine initiative tracker cards, which are pretty cool. These are all perforated. I just haven't ripped them apart yet. So um, you rip these apart and then you're able to pass them out to your players so they know where their turn will fall in battle. Okay, that's really cool. We've also have some condition cards, which I thought was really neat. Um, it might be hard for new players to remember what the different conditions are. Like you may find your character ends up getting knocked prone or poisoned or stunned. And these have different effects in combat. So they've, they've also provided a list of cards with a little image on one side and um, the effects that that has on the other side like an incapacitated creature can't take actions or reactions, okay? So those also are perforated so you can hand them out. 
You do only get one copy of each though, so if more than one person in your party is poisoned, they'll have to share the card, but I think that's okay. Invisible, I like how it's just little footsteps, that's cute. Um, so you get a set of condition cards as well. That's, that's very handy, it'll help new players remember what those conditions are. You also have, I'm trying to see what order I wanna go through these. Uh, we have three, no, four. Four pages of magic item cards. While your players are adventuring, they may come across different magic items that they can use in their adventures. And these cards on this side list the different magic items they may find and what they do. That's pretty cool. Um, sometimes when you just write these things on your sheet as a new player, you can kind of forget that they're written on there. Like, oh, I forgot. I had a potion of healing. I would have used that if I had remembered. And this, this card may help the new players out to remember that they have those items. Um, then we have some quest cards. These are pretty cool. These are specific to this adventure. One of the things this adventure does is when they first, the players first get into town, there's like a quest board, almost like a job board or a bulletin board, right? In the town square with different quests that are posted. And this, this gives the players the option to read what these different quests are. This would even be a really cute prop if you got a little bulletin board and actually just thumbtack them on the board. That'd be really cute. So these are little side quests that they can do. The other really neat thing about this Essentials Kit is it allows you to play with only two players, a Dungeon Master and one character, which the general rules don't really, not that they don't allow it, but it's, it's kind of difficult sometimes to play with that few of people. So one thing the Essentials Kit does is it gives you these really neat little, what they call sidekicks. And these are like additional NPCs or what we call a non-player character that are actually going to go on the adventure with the player. So essentially they do have a couple people in the party. Um, they can either be run by the DM or run by the player, but you're essentially going to let them, if you're only playing with two people, let them pick out a sidekick that's going to go along with them on their adventure. And there's three different kinds of side, uh, of side quests. There's three different kinds of, what did I say they were called again? Sidekicks. Three different kinds of sidekicks. Um, there are experts, warriors, and spellcasters. So it kind of will help you round out your party. If you want to be a rogue, maybe you'd be really, really helpful to have a spellcaster with you. And there are inf there's information in the rules as well on how to level up that, that sidekick as well. And I like the little visual they have, that's neat. Um, now with all these little perforated cards, they've also given you a little box. It's flat in the box, but all you have to do is give it a little squeeze um, that you can store all these cards in. So once they're separated, they're not all over the box. They'll be contained in this cute little box. The, there's a few more neat things in this box that don't come in the starter set. And the thing is, this is actually only $5 more. Your starter set, like I said, retails for $19.99. The essentials kit retails for $24.99. So it's only $5 more and you get a lot more things. Um, it also comes with a dungeon master screen. Now, one of the things this is used for is a dungeon master places this screen in front of them and it just helps them hide their roles or hide the, the, the adventure book so players can't see what's going on. Um, and it has some really cool artwork that has to pertain to uh, Ice Spire Peak on the back, well, that the players would see this side. The other side actually has all this really neat information that the Dungeon Master needs, like little reminders. It reminds them of all the different things you can do in combat, the different conditions and what they do, um, things like that, the different sizes of different creatures, what players need to roll depending on how difficult a task is. Whoops. <laughs> so that's really cool. Um, normally you have to buy these separately, but they're made out of much um, better material. This one's a little flimsy, but again, at least it is a screen, a Dungeon Master screen. And I think this is gonna be really helpful um, that this comes in this box as well. And then lastly, uh, we have a map that's pretty cool. One side, is a section of the Sword Coast. 
that pertains to the adventure. And the other side is actually a little map of a town that they start in as well. Um, the starter set has some maps that are just in the adventure book. So if you wanted to be able to hand them out to your players, you'd have to make like a photocopy of them or actually cut them out of the book. But this actually includes an external map, which is really cool. Now you could even play both of these together if you really wanted to. You could, your characters could start as level one in the starter set. Um, and then they could continue, the same characters could continue in the other adventure if you want. But you can also play them separately. So again, the starter set is kind of a great idea for people who just want to grab a character out of the box and jump in. The essentials kit is great for people who actually want to make their own characters. I think it would also be really good for someone who wants a dungeon master for the first time who's maybe only ever been a character or a player. Um, it also, again, is going to include those rules for only two players, which is really cool because um, Dungeons & Dragons has never put out specific rules like that before on how to play with just two players and you just get so much extra I mean I, I like both they both have their own reasons of why you would get them but um, yeah there's a lot of interesting stuff in both boxes oh and all the dice <laughs> gotta love the dice I like the red ones too I think as opposed to the blue ones I love how they gave you the extras oh so the reason they often give you extra d6s is for certain weapons or spells. Um, a lot of times it will tell you to roll 2d6. This way you don't just have one of them and you have to roll them twice and add them together. You can actually roll two copies. Same with having two 20-sided dies. I guess 20-sided dice. <laughs> um, often when you're running Dungeons and Dragons, your players will either have what's called advantage or disadvantage. Maybe they're really good at doing something or they described how they're going to do something really well and you want to give them advantage on the roll. Or perhaps they're really bad at doing something and you want to give them disadvantage. What that essentially means is they're going to roll two 20-sided dice. If they had advantage, they get to take the higher number. If they have disadvantage, they have to take the lower one. So a lot of times it's easier just to roll two of these dice together at the same time. It goes, goes faster too. So that's why they have the extra dice in this one. So I think there's a lot more bang for your buck in this one for just five extra dollars. Oop, there goes the dice. Um, and again, you get character creation with this one. So starter set, no character creation, but quick and easy, jump right in, let's play Lost Mine of Fandelver and see if we like this game. <laughs> you, it's almost kind of like you can play this as the basics and graduate up to this one. And then if you finish the essentials kit and you're like, I am really loving this, I gotta get into this game more, then you could graduate even again to picking up those three core rule books um, and getting a lot more customization options on your characters. Again, this one has limited, even though you're creating your characters, it's a little limited, so. Um, but those are the basics between the two different starter sets. You can start with one or the other, or you can even play them both if you'd like. Only a $5 difference, and again, I'll put links down in the description below on where you could pick them up. But I always recommend your friendly local game store and support our local community. Um, but let me know as well which one you think you might pick up if you've never played before. You can, even if you're a Dungeons and Dragons veteran, you can still pick these up and play the adventures in them if you'd like. They would also be great if you have some friends who want to try out Dungeons and Dragons and have never done it before, but you want something quick and easy for them. It's another good thing to pick up just to introduce more people to our Dungeons and Dragons world. So there you go. There's uh, kind of the differences between the two kits. Let me know what you thought. Make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell so you know when our new videos are up. If you liked this video, give us a thumbs up and we'll see you next time.